To all the geeks and nerds, welcome to another episode of Dissecting Minecraft, and I'm joined again with Methods as usual. And this this week, this week we are Jules and Vincent of Minecraft. <laughs> you like that one, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this week we are going to be looking at some instant wire. We've got a whole bunch of stuff set up over there behind us, and uh, yeah. So I think Methods, why don't you take us through it and uh, yeah, show some of this stuff. So let's get started with the very basic idea of instant wire. We have shown this before. And that's basically that you can do something retraction based. Right. So here we have a bunch of extended pistons, all have a redstone block in front of them. And as we learned, pistons take two game ticks to start moving stuff, but it instantly starts. So as soon as we unpower this lever here, the first redstone block starts moving. And while it starts moving, it's no longer a redstone block. And therefore it depowers the next piston, right. which has a redstone block in front, which depowers the next piston and so on. Right. Therefore, we can make the very base of uh, something instantly happening, which is just retraction based. Right. And is, is, there any is there any limit to the length of that light? There is no limit to the length of that. There's just one major downside, and that is why this is not really used. And this is when we now power it again. You can right. see one piston after another extending. And of course, the longer you make this, the longer it actually takes to mm. reset your instant wire, because only the retraction side of it is instant. Right. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Then the next, this is probably the most basic, well-known instant wire here. Mm -hmm. And it also uses something we've talked before about, and that is a zero-tick pulse generator. So right here, we're sending in a redstone signal mm -hmm. into this bottom block here. Yep. Which instantly starts powering this top piston. Yep. Which instantly starts moving the redstone block. Since it's also moving on top of the piston here, it instantly updates this piston and tells it, hey, you're no longer powered via QC, start retracting. And therefore this block here retracts, which removes the power source of the first piston. And okay. therefore we create a zero tick. So if I just freeze the game now and flick this lever, you can actually prove that this redstone block here instantly arrives right. and therefore instantly turns on our lamp. Excellent. Right, awesome. It's really cool. And of course, it works in both edges. So rising and falling edge, both instant. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I think I've I think I've seen that before. I think maybe is that the same one used on on Cycraft for your your lines? Yeah, we used to use that a bunch before we knew the better ones we're gonna come up with. Mm, sure. Okay, here's another uh, basically a retraction based one. It's pretty much exactly the same as this one here. The only difference is in between we can use redstone dust which of course that reduces the amount of pistons and reset time we have by a lot. And then we use another trick here with the redstone torch. We have this redstone torch here on top and it quasi powers this piston. And as soon as we turn on the redstone, the torch here depowers, mm -hmm. which depowers the piston. And then we get an instant retraction as usual. Yep. And then this torch turns back on, which powers them quicker again. So you can see now if I Set this up. On one edge, nothing happens at all. But if we trigger it again, you can see those two torches here. Right. They quickly light up again and extend our pistons. This just reduces the reset time of our instant. OK, awesome. OK, and then let's get to the next one. Okay, right so nice. here, this were the first major improvements. I think one of the first people that showed that is was El Mango, but this is a known trick since a long time. So I'm not sure if anyone can actually claim this, which is just rails. Because these redstone wires here, uh, instant wires are all super nice, but they have one major downside. And this is all the redstone dust. Redstone dust is super laggy. Right. And the more you power in the same tick, the laggier, of course, it gets. So you really, if you go long, you want to kind of avoid all of these three here and go with rails or something different. Okay. And here we use simple block update detection. So we turn this rail here off, which updates this block update detector here, which instantly starts moving and also instantly starts removing this redstone block here. Ah, uh, right, yes. Messed it up a little bit by triggering in the center of it. <laughs> <laughs> but if we just flick this lever, we can see our lamp instantly turns on. Yep. And it also works in both edges. Right, I see. Awesome. Okay. Right. So here we have a little bit of a different one. It's based on the exact same thing of powering rails and keeping them butt powered, basically. And this was, I think, made by Panic. So mm -hmm. here we use, if we look at this, 
we use the fact that we can redirect redstone dust without it causing an update. So this rail here actually still thinks that this redstone dust would power it, because if I trigger it real quick, you can see the detector rail retracting. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we should actually just freeze the game to show it fully. So I've triggered it. Now we do tick step two. Turns off. Yep. We get our instant signal. Yep. Now another two game ticks later, our repeater realizes, hey, I'm actually no longer powered because this dust wasn't pointing into it. And then another two game ticks later, our torch turns back on, which powers the rail here again. And the detector rail moves forward. And after two game ticks, it arrives here and Reflects redirects it. our redstone dust again. Right, I see. And the big upside of this one is we can trigger it. Oh, I'm still frozen. <laughs> okay. We can trigger it here and get an instant signal. But we can also power it from this side and get an instant signal. Ah, uh, right. So this is a two-directional instant wire. Super nice. Sometimes you just need that. And it's also really lag-friendly. You only have those few redstone dusts here, which you could, if you wanted, you could use comparators here and even lower the signal strength. Because the laggy part about redstone dust is always the the way it decreases in power. It goes from 15 to 14, from 14 to 13, and so on, and not from 15 to zero. Okay. So what's the, what's the how how far apart are these 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 two modules? Are they is it nine apart? Uh, the, the they can of? be 17 blocks apart. 17 apart. Okay. So one less than you would think. Okay. If the you would expect it to be 18 blocks since every rail line from the power source can be nine blocks. Uh -huh. Of course, it goes in both directions from the power source. Right, of course. We need this extra block of space so this rail here can update the next one. Right. Therefore, it's only 17 blocks. Okay, awesome. Okay, maybe we should also quickly talk about how this whole thing works again. So here we have a long line of rails. Yep. All of it is powered. Yep. And if I now just unpower this one here, it doesn't turn off because it rails don't check every sec for two blocks apart where they are still powered. They don't do that. They only check one block. And therefore, we can simply trick this whole rail line here into thinking it's still being powered, even though we only have this power source here and it should only be powered for nine blocks. Right, I see. Yeah, yeah. And if I now yeah. provide the block update at the correct spot, yeah, all the rails instantly off. turn on. Right. That's basically how all the rail instant wires work. Just by tricking rails into staying powered, even though they shouldn't. Right, okay, yep. And I, th I think we showed that in a previous episode as well, didn't we? Exactly, we showed that before. Just just a quick recap. Yeah. Okay, then here we have two more ones by two no to name, mm -hmm. which use pretty much observers to do the same exact thing. So if we provide a block update here, we can see our rails instantly turning on. Actually, it wasn't reset correctly. Let's just believe me that it's actually instant. <laughs> Since I have the butt here in the bank, it actually updates our rails again every time I try to reset it. Uh -huh. But this is an instant wire, so you yep. can see all the rails turn off in the, same, in the same tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also works just the same. So the observer here detects I turned off, powers this rail here again, and it does this for the whole line. And back here we have our input power source that's always static. Right. So how, just have to make how is that? This might be a stupid question. So how is that instant? Because with an observer, we get a two game tick delay, right? So how does it uh, make it instant? OK, so only the the detection edge is instant. So only the turning off part is instant of it. Ah. We turn off, it instantly turns off. Let's actually just freeze the game again. So I click this button. Nothing happens. Uh -huh. We tick step two ticks forward because we have this input observer here. Right, yeah. Now it's off. Right. And now after two more game ticks, it's going to repower all of our rails. Right. Oh, there we go. Uh, I see. Right. OK. And this is just update order based since this technically it's a bit weird how it works, but it's just update order based since our input signal came from here. The first rail that updates is always the last one in the line. OK. So technically, if you put um, command blocks on every rail here, and detect them, and they, for example, every command block says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. This rail here in the back is the one that says one. Right, this okay. is the first rail to update. This is the second rail, the third rail, always the furthest away from your power source. 
Right, okay. And how, how far apart are these, uh, these observers? Are they nine apart? There's always seven blocks in between them. Seven, seven between them, right. Yep. So basically, here's our power source for this segment. Mm -hmm. It goes towards here, and it's nine blocks uh, until right. the next observer. One, two, three, But it's the max range of... Six, seven, nine. I see. Yep. yep. The max range of rails, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Here we have basically the same thing. It's just a little bit more compact and nice, but it's also a lot more expensive. And it just, we detect the observer, the rail here, mm -hmm. and we detect it with another observer and put it into this block. Yep. So it's also a little bit slower since we have two observers here instead of just the one we have over here. And it pretty much works the exact same. Oh, it's still frozen the game. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yep, perfect. Great. Okay, then all of these have been horizontal instant wires. What mm -hmm. can we do for vertical instant wires? Because that's a lot more limited. Uh -huh. Since, for example, it's way harder to use rails. Technically, you can use rails and do a, a staircase thingy, but I wouldn't consider that a horizontal instant wire. Yeah, yeah. Because you use a lot more space for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So cool. here we have a simple retraction-based one. It's pretty much the exact same thing as the very first one we showed. I just added slime blocks in between to have less pistons. And I've also added a little quicker reset here. So if I just power this, see it instantly turns the lamp on. Yep. And then instead of waiting for the bottom piston to extend, which extends the next piston, which then extends the next piston, on every slime block I have an observer here that triggers a trapdoor that just re-triggers the piston for a faster reset. Okay. Watch carefully. We can see the second piston here pushing out the redstone blocks before the bottom even extends again. Yeah, if you, can you press that again? Just so I get a good shot. Can you put a lever? So now, no matter how long your input signal is, it's going to reset fast here on the top. Okay, awesome. Very nice. Okay, then we got a very neat one that was introduced with 1.13. That's my actually my favorite vertical instant wire, which is the bubble column. Ah, right, yes. So here we pretty much just um, destroy. We suck up a water source here, one block above the soul sand, and quickly dispense it again. Right. Do not get two signals. And if we just do this, you can see all our lamps turn on at the same tick, wow. no matter how far they are apart. So this is a super nice one, super easy to build as well, super lag friendly. Ah, oh, right. This is what... Oh, okay. <laughs> I've actually got a good use for this. <laughs> the whetstone. Yeah, the whetstone. Yeah, this is good. That's really good. And the reason we're not sucking it up on uh, on the soul sand directly, mm -hmm. simply that would be instant on sucking up the water, but it would take one second if we place the water. Right. And if we do it here on the second block, everything above it just instantly happens. Right. So so even though when when you, when we make these bubble columns, I don't know if people have noticed, but you you don't see the bubbles necessarily straight away up the whole column. It kind of the bubbles sort of flow up. So that that animation has nothing to do with whether this has been updated or not, it's the whole column's updated straight away. The column is, the whole column is, yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then we have a few more obscure ones and not technically instant ones, but pretty much do the, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So here we have one, I think you also used this in your mob farm. Uh -huh. Yep. Just a basic daylight sensor detector, bang. Works also 255 blocks, no matter how far you want. Technically, it's not instant because this daylight sensor doesn't instantly update. They run on sort of a global clock mm -hmm. to cause updates, but you know, it's uh, pretty much the same. Okay. Yep. Okay, then we have a, one that most people don't even know about. It's also not that useful, and it's just a chain of hoppers that goes, goes down. Yeah. So if I just throw an item in here, we can actually tick freeze again. Throw the item here. Now the item got sucked up. Uh -huh. And one, two, three, it's down there. Wow. Yeah, I was actually surprised about that because I would have thought that it would take, because obviously there's hopper speed, so I would have thought it would have taken some time to get down there, but that's that's actually pretty cool. So the whole deal is this top hopper here sucks up the item. Yep. And as soon as it sucks, it is sucked up, it doesn't have to transfer to the bottom. The bottom hopper already sucks it in. Right, so they're, they're, and so then this bottom hopper sucks it immediately out. This bottom hopper sucks it immediately out, and so on. 
So all those hoppers are basically sucking all of the, all of them the same tick, and so that's why it's instant. Yep. Awesome. Okay, and then we have the last one, which is also super obscure and not recommended to be used <laughs> because it's super laggy, but technically <laughs> yeah. it works. Yeah. So yeah. just breaking or lighting a portal, that is instant. Yeah. <laughs> And actually creating a portal doesn't cause an update. Wow, I didn't know that. I think that was changed from 112 to 113. So here we see it, it works. Oh yeah. And it doesn't work when creating it. That's that's weird. <laughs> a brand new discovery right here. You've seen it. Yeah, I learned something today. Awesome. <laughs> wow, really good. Yeah, I think really that's good. about it. So what kind of what kind of things do you use these kind of instant wires? What are they useful for? So I guess you use this stuff on Cycraft quite a lot. So what kind of it what kind of examples are, are useful? It's pretty much depends how you play. I mean, a lot of people are fine with taking a long time to do something, but mm. if you have to cover long, long ranges, for example, in 112, where you could still do chunk loading, we have um, sand dupers that are kilometers far away. Right. And if we just would use repeaters for that, it would take more than five, six minutes to actually turn on a sand duper. Right, right. So, yeah, the further you go with them, the more worth it more actually sense. becomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, also, if you take, for example, the bubble column, it's definitely easier to build than a torch tower. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think with the bubble columns, did you use didn't you use this with with Doc with his uh, his llama? Uh, for the TNT can, yeah, for, for the TNT, example, because you want to if you want to yep. um, ignite a lot of TNT at the same time, you could use, exactly. use that kind of thing. So pretty much, if you want to have something triggering at the same time that's far apart, as soon as you go more than fifteen blocks, your redstone dust no longer works. Mm -hmm. Or you can't add the repeater, and then you're at a point where you kind of want something to instantly happen. Also, it's just a nice thing to have stuff happening as fast as possible. Yeah, in yeah, general, of yeah. from like a technical aspect, you always want to try to to not waste time. Yeah, sure. All right, awesome, really good stuff, man. Really good. All right, so that's about it for another episode. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone that if you've got any kind of contraptions or any parts of technical Minecraft that you'd like to explain and you'd like dissected, then uh, get it in the comment section. Uh, we've got a list of a couple of things that we still want to cover. Uh, but if we get some suggestions from you, that would be really, really useful. All right, so if you uh, enjoyed the episode, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any uh, comments or suggestions or any kind of feedback, then get it in the comment section. Alright my geeks, until next time, I'll see you later.